Hi, I'm Phil from the Badder team at Samsung. In this video, I will show you the simple steps required to migrate an existing Badder app from the SDK version 1.0.0 to 1.1.0. We're planning a wide range of devices on the Badder platform. With the Badder SDKs, reusing your apps or code with different Badder hardware is straightforward, as you will see during the course of this video. This video is one of our series of Badder introduction videos, which deal with various topics that should help you get up to speed with Badder. So, make sure you check out our blog at developer.badder.com or watch the rest of our videos on youtube.com. To demonstrate the migration method available to you, I have created a simple application that I'm calling Migration Demo App. After running through this method, I will give you some useful hints and recommendations to make the porting process as pain-free as possible. The Badder SDK was first made available in May 2010 in a beta state, and since August 2010, the current release, 1.0.0, has been available to download. This version of the SDK mainly targeted the first Samsung Wave device, the S8500. The SDK version 1.1.0 is aimed at the newer members of the Wave family, and the Badder apps you have developed for the Wave S8500 can be reused as we will learn in this migration guide. The API of SDK 1.1.0 is backward compatible with the old version of the SDK. Of course, there are hardware differences between the Wave devices that support different versions of the SDK, such as screen resolution or color depth. To address this, different build options are used to create the binaries. Binaries for the Wave S8500, for example, will not run as is on new devices. However, because the API is the same, you can recompile your application specifically for these new devices, and it will work as expected. Now we will look at how to migrate your app to the new version of the Badder SDK. In order to walk you through the migration, we prepared a simple Badder app initially built with the older version of the SDK. This app is titled Migration Demo App. The app simply contains a button which invokes a method that queries system information. We make use of the public static method getValue from the systeminfo class of the OSP system namespace and pass it the API version key. After clicking the button, we display the SDK version that was used to build the app in a label in a form. As I've already mentioned, there is a simple way to migrate an existing Badder app over to the new SDK. You can reuse an entire existing Badder application project and build it with a new manifest file. First, we create a new application profile with the application manager on the developer.badder.com site to receive a new application ID. Click the My Applications tab. Then, invoke the application manager on the left. Here you can start to generate your application profile. First, give your app a name and add a description if you want. Second, define the privileges that are the main functionalities of your app. If your application involves any remote services from the Badder server, you can define them during the third step. Fourth, you specify the hardware requirements against the mobile handset. When you're finished, download the manifest file created by the application manager for your app. Next, we launch the Badder IDE from the Badder 1.1.0 SDK. In the IDE, we can now import the existing Badder 1.0.0 application project to the Badder 1.1.0 IDE with a right-click in the Project Explorer. In the Context menu, we select Import and click Next, and point to the workspace where we have our Migration Demo app placed. After that, we can select our project by selecting the checkbox and clicking Finish. This project should then appear in our Project Explorer pane. We then need to set the correct model of the Badder build as Wave WQ LP1. We do this by invoking the properties from the Projects menu, go to Badder Build, and select the According checkbox. Next, we copy the new manifest file downloaded from the Badder developer site into the existing application project, making sure to overwrite the old one. You do this simply in your file explorer of choice. Finally, we save the project, set the active build configuration, and build the project. We can now run our migration demo app, and clicking on the button correctly shows us the version of the SDK we used to build our Badder app. 
Before we conclude, let me give you some hints and tips. Badder SDK 1.1.0 supports auto-scaling. This feature allows you to support multiple resolutions without the need to rewrite your application. The application UI can be automatically scaled up or down from its base resolution to match the target device resolution. It is, however, necessary that the application base resolution and the target device resolution have the same aspect ratio. Right-clicking on your project name in the Project Explorer. Go to Properties, then Badder Build and Application Information. At the bottom of this dialog, you can find the checkbox for enabling auto-scaling. Tick this and click Apply. In addition, you can use a single set of image resources corresponding to one resolution. The Badder platform automatically scales the resources up or down to match the target device resolution. However, as using auto-scaling for bitmap resources reduces their quality, we recommend that you create bitmap resources separately for each possible device resolution. If you notice unexpected results with auto-scaling, there is another badder feature you can exploit. You can consider customizing UI resources for different target device resolutions. The badder UI platform selects the resource version where the resolution matches the device resolution best. To make use of this, you can create multiple copies of an XML resource, for example forms, with different resolutions and give them the same names. The Badder platform uses the resource that best matches the target device resolution when it draws the application UI. When you create a form using construct L file name, the UI builder selects the XML file based on the target device resolution if there are multiple resources with the same name. To use optimized bitmap resources, use the getBitmapN method of the app resource of the app namespace instead of the decodeN method of class image of the media namespace. The getBitmapN method interprets the given resource path and returns the resource that best matches with the target device resolution. You should also be very careful when using transparency. Devices based on the 1.0.0 firmware, such as the Wave S8500, do support a 32-bit frame buffer. Some 1.1.0 devices will only use a 16-bit frame buffer, which does not support alpha blending for transparency. Hence, we recommend avoiding setting the background of a UI component to a transparent color, because the color then shows as an opaque black on devices, which do not support the alpha blending. On such devices, the alpha value is also ignored in color methods, such as set background color. The following UI components have a transparent background by default in device models, which do support alpha blending. Label, list, panel, scroll panel, and overlay panel. If these components are placed on top of other components in devices which do not support alpha blending, their look will not be the same as in devices supporting alpha blending. We can show this effect in a simple example. Here we're showing a label in a pop-up using a device with alpha blending. If we simply reuse the code without modifications, the label will use the same background color as the form. In order to improve this appearance, you can change the background color by using the method setBackgroundColor. In this video, I showed you how to migrate an existing Badder app which was developed with the SDK 1.0.0 to SDK 1.1.0. You can simply reuse an entire existing Badder application project with a new manifest.xml file. I also gave you some hints and recommendations on how to enable auto-scaling and transparency to make sure that the look and feel of your Badder app remains as expected when an app is installed on a device with different characteristics. Extensive documentation is available in the SDK, so take a look at Application Migration Guide, Badder Device Dependent Features, and UI Navigation Using Hardware Keyboard. Detailed API change notes for SDK version 1.1.0 can be downloaded from our developer site. So now you've dipped your toes in, check out the website where you can really dive into Badder.